All right, the last thing we're gonna talk about is, is mushroom therapy. Mushrooms. Awesome. So I can't talk about mushrooms without talking about Dr. Paul Stamets. So he's a, a PhD guy. And he's an Olympia local man. He did some of the original research up at Bastyr University, uh, which is in Seattle. It's a naturopathic medical school. And they studied turkey tail. specifically for fighting breast cancer. And now we know a little bit more, it, it fights hormonal cancers, so we can put hormonal underneath that. Is that the one that's also known as Coriolis? No, no sir. Yeah. Nope. Okay. Turkey tail, like you might see a, a tree and down on the bottom, it, it kind of comes around like this, you know? So it kind of looks like this turkey tail with a squiggly, wiggly edge and like different color. Yeah, yeah they, they name it because it looks like a turkey's tail, I guess. Um, the, so in the research they did on, on turkey tail specifically for breast cancer patients, he actually has a TED Med talk before he goes into talking about it. But it, not only did it, did it decrease uh, onset, but also uh, recurrence for breast cancer. Um, so specifically, that one there. More, more generally, what we love about mushrooms, some of the studies they've prop studied the most Important is 1,3-beta-glucans. And these, again, have to do with stimulating our immune system and decreasing inflammation. 1,3-beta-glucans um, are not found in a ton of foods, but they are very pre uh, prevalent in mushrooms. So there's different uh, derivations of them that they look at. So we can talk about, so there's turkey tail. Another one, since we were talking about it earlier, lion's mane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to put, is it M-A-N-E or M-A-I-N? See, there you go. I think that's right. I'd have to edit that one. I want to put M-A-N-E. There we go. Okay, for some reason. That's one that, they call it the pom-pom, right? Yeah. I can't wait to see how it looks like when you grow it. But this one helps, so it's a neuro, neuro hormone. It has effect on the brain. So it helps cognition, All right. decrease, basically it decreases inflammation in the brain. How amazing is that? <laughs> so when he puts it in formulas, so say someone had brain cancer, right? That would be a targeted area for that. Mm -hmm. um, lions may be perfect, although, boy, anyone could use a little help with cognition. <laughs> for sure, all of us. Um, <laughs> other ones, so reishi, well, reishi mushroom, when we talk about Longevity, anti-inflammatory. Uh, reishi is in a lot of different formulas for not just breast or hormone, but they tend to mix it in with many. Um, been around, so again, go back to Chinese medicine where we borrow so much of this from for like, you know, yeah, 10,000 years, a long time. Uh, reishi mushrooms again, so they stimulate the immune system uh, and they're anti-inflammatory. It's all about inflammation, 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 inflammation. I'm going to write anti-inflammation. <laughs> there we go, anti-inflammatory. So important. So sometimes you'll see these in teas uh, or condensed to like shot drinks. Uh, Chinese and herbal medicine or classical Chinese medicine, they'll put them in granules and you kind of do them in a slurry with maybe some of the herbs to support your system and you kind of do a little slurry shot every day. So there's a number of different ways to get these in. We don't have them in any IV forms, and that's all right. <laughs> yeah. One through beta glucans, not on the market yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's other herbs that we have IV, but none of none of the mushroom formulas. So, so those are some specific ones that we use for specific reasons. Cool. Yeah. And the best way to get them? Eating them, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So, and here's one for fun, linking back to the vitamin D thing, because mushrooms also have. So one through beta glucans, vitamin D, Higher concentrations. If you took a, a portobello mushroom and you put it upside down in the sun, it increases the vitamin D content of it anywhere from 100 to 400 huh. percent. This is research that Dr. Russell Mars is working on in Portland, Oregon. Huh. <laughs> yeah. 
I, Super interesting. We were chatting a few months back. Uh, so portobello mushroom, like, because you could buy that in your everyday store. Yeah. I yeah. was like, well, what about button mushrooms? And he's like, I don't know. We're sitting portobellos. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I still like portobellos. So, great fried with butter. And that's if you put them upside down in the direct sunlight for one day. Huh. He said one day. And I'm like, okay, well, if I did it for a week, would it be a dried out mushroom, but better? Like, I don't know. One day. Maybe. It's all right. <laughs> so, yeah, buy fresh portobello, stick them out there because it's like huh. they would soak up. I mean, right now the light's really low and the UV's really low, so yeah. put them in there a couple days. I mean, it can't hurt. Unless they got really dried and nasty, but you just <laughs> cut a little, spritz them with water. So, uh, beta glucans <clears throat> and increasing your, your vitamin D levels. And of course, mushrooms just taste good because mm -hmm. they're delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any reason that you can think of not to uh, take mushrooms and get get either supplementation or just raw mushrooms in your foods? Yeah. So the health of the mushroom has to do with the health of the soil. Mm -hmm. How'd you say that? Um, in companies that do supplements, like Dr. Stamets' company, they're definitely very careful about how they grow them. Like they literally have warehouses with controlled air and the dirt or the logs and things they're growing them on uh, to make them completely organic because that mushroom's gonna absorb whatever out of the out of the soil. Yeah. And if there were heavy metals or other toxins or other things, they might absorb some of those too. And then you'd be eating that, which would be awful. Mm -hmm. So your food sources, like mushrooms are food, you always wanna make sure that's as clean as you can get it. So getting your own log and growing it at home is a fantastic yeah. idea and a fun science project for the kids. <laughs> You can grow uh, you can grow mushrooms almost in your garden. Turkey toe would be hard. Uh, lion's mane's easy on logs. Um, yeah. but there's other kinds that you can try and propagate in you know controlled environment, especially if you have a a way to keep it kind of like greenhouse even in your little garden yeah. beds. Um, especially well in Oregon, in Washington, I should say, probably not in California or hot places. Sure, you could experiment around, but yeah. So you want to be careful of your sources in terms of you know when you should not eat them mm -hmm. if it's. A supplement from I don't know, some a big box store from generic a generic big from box a store. generic big box store. <clears throat> probably <laughs> maybe want to shop a little closer to home. You know your retailer or your mushroom yeah. grower. Yeah, there's been um, on the forefront too of mushroom medicine. I've seen some sprays lately where they're getting back to the psychotropics. Mm -hmm. So mushrooms also have another compound, and I'm probably going to spell it wrong. It's Silly Sibins. Whew. P S Y S S C I L I B I N S. Okay, I'm probably spelling that wrong. That's really close. Silly Sibins. And they're the ones that are yeah. they're neuroactive and calming and this and that. Um, and actually, Dr. Paul Stamets did a bunch of research on Silly Sibins. He's written books about it. So that's like a new thing lately yeah. where I've had a few patients ask me like, have I did this like basil spray or oral spray? Is that going to be you helpful? I said, well, I don't know. You might want to check the side effects with your yeah. meds because whew, yeah, like shrooms, like, yeah. but in a kind of controlled medical delivery system, sure. they are new. I, I have not that, done that much research on them, but silly sirens are out there. So yeah. In the nutshell then, we got beta glucans, helps vitamin D, helps your immune system, like and they taste delicious. Why not? Why not? Put them awesome. in your salad, your soup. Yeah. Anything That's else? great. Did I answer all your questions? Yeah. That this is probably a separate, like, side note. Well, because yeah. we've been talking about these different supplements and things, I think it's crazy that people try and fight cancer without looking to their diet to see the connection between what they are and aren't eating. And food and health, yeah. Mm -hmm. like food yeah. is medicine. Absolutely, yeah. Hippocrates, you said it. Mm -hmm. Food is medicine. So, people have to make that connection that if you're putting non-nutritious, non you know non-nutrient dense junk food in there, especially sugar, mm -hmm. sugar feeds cancer. Period. Glucose, sugar, yeah. carbs. Mm -hmm. That's why we love all the options of whether it's maybe trying a ketogenic diet or a vegetarian. Seventh Day Adventist incredibly decreased rates compared to cancer of the entire rest of the population because mm -hmm. they're pretty strict vegetarians and on and on and obviously mm -hmm. some other things too, right? So, yeah, yeah, but yeah. not everyone can do vegetarian. Okay, that's why we like ketogenic as an option. Some mm -hmm. people feel well satiated and the body can run on fat as fuel, good healthy fats, not like, you know, fried, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> French fried. Bacon and butter together. Well, right? <laughs> All the unsaturated, monounsaturated fats, good fat burning fuel sources. I fried my bacon and butter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's uh, there's a direct correlation between what you eat 
and actually more importantly, what you absorb. Because right? yeah. it could go through the tube, because we're a donut, right? In one hole, out the other, you are. Not exactly what you eat, but what you absorb. Yeah. Um, right? yeah. So, I mean, that's just how we think of it, but essentially, yes, what you eat, what you put down there. And so, all those choices that you make on a day by day by day basis, baby steps, you know, all right, let's not choose the donuts, let's maybe try something healthy, mm -hmm. like some oats with. Some walnuts in there, yeah. or, you know, and some fresh strawberries and something that's sweet to taste. The stevia yeah. tastes as delicious and not wreck your blood sugar and promote. Yeah, the average American eats ten times as much sugar as they did twenty years ago. Yeah, it's crazy. But that's high fructose corn syrup and soda. So, yeah, paying attention to your diet is a necessity. Yeah, there are some doctors that don't counsel patients that way. Mm -hmm. They don't want to lose weight. They say, don't lose weight here, drink. Oh, yeah. These particular yeah. products. Like, I had a, I had an oncologist tell me that. Just no matter what you need to be eating, if it's a steak a day, just keep the weight on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because weight is a, a very potent predictor of outcomes. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they might cut off their nose to spite their face. In other words, they might give them sugar-laden boost drinks when that's not going to help their immune system and mm -hmm. it's going to promote cancer when they should be eating more nutrient-dense foods, or even on a ketogenic diet, you will absolutely lose weight. It's not it's not the best type for everyone, but for a lot of patients, it is an incredible way to, yeah. How do we eat to start cancer? Don't feed it sugar. Mm -hmm. So, like, the number one thing I always think, though, is, like, if people are going to do anything, at least just stop eating sugar. Like, we have so many different options of different sweetener, like stevia, monk fruit, and all these other things. Right. So no why? Natural yeah. fruits. So the first thing that it's you like, can do when you're... It feels like it's basic to cancer. me is like, or, or yeah, people who, are, who smoke, it's like, there's so much information, yeah. why it's yeah. so bad for you. Mm -hmm. And also, in that rain thing about mental health, so to mm -hmm. bring up mindfulness and meditation, mm -hmm. and all the positive thought and positive prayer and positive community and on and on, that just promotes all the good endorphins and, mm -hmm. and healing rather than the negative thought and... Pro-inflammatory pro um, cytokines that that decrease to more uh, well, increase more inflammation, decrease healing. It's just like why wouldn't you? Some people are stuck though, so not everybody has access to everything. So hopefully, yes, <laughs> with things like Cancer Box and all the naturopathic doctors and oncologists that understand functional medicine and are using that as part of a patient pro, patient approach, whether it's you know Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Or, Seattle, Cancer Carolina, whoever, I, I um, like every single person that realizes they have an option mm -hmm. because all the statistics, and I know I said this too, I say to every one of my cancer patients, all the statistics they hand them, like your three-year rate is this, your five-year rate, you do this drug for this stage cancer, they're reading a bunch of statistics. But those are patients in studies who didn't change their diet, who didn't decide to do high-dose IV vitamin C or curcumin orally or anything. Those are patients who strictly either did chemo, drugs, or radiation or some particular combination, period. Actually, they're usually not allowed to change their diet, yeah. and they don't want them to interfere with those results. So Yeah, radical remission like the statistics for people who went into spontaneous remission and stay in remission or people who are willing to evaluate their lives and the decisions that they're making and what they're eating and then actually willing to change that and think outside of the box of, what their doctor or first oncologist they talk to tells them to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of times patients hear what the first doctor oncologist says, and they and they believe that they can't change it. Mm -hmm. Right? They think that that statistic is their is their fate, whatever degree. Yeah, and then I mean, that, that one doctor because they're in a lab coat and have whatever initials behind their name are giving them the best and only accurate information. But in reality, you need to like seek out a plethora of. We need it. Sometimes. Sometimes. A lot of information. I'm glad we yeah. ran really fast from that first doctor. <laughs> <laughs> right. And because we asked about my dose vitamin C, and she's like, "Well, I'm not going to stop you." When it, to to us that was a red flag of like, okay, so you're not. She said, "Eat whatever you want, do whatever you want. If it makes you feel better to do vitamins and things, do that. Don't lose weight. As long as you don't lose weight and you don't interfere with my." So chemo, we kind of knew to like, yeah. okay, we're. Yeah, no, so right. yeah, definitely getting second and third and fourth opinions yes. to you find someone who jives with your thought process and your understanding and what you need because it's all about you. Yeah. Build a team. Build a team, that's right. Yeah. There's a lot of incredible specialists out there yeah. and some that are really amazingly educated in functional medicine and supportive cam therapies and others that are dinosaurs and just 
maybe hadn't stayed up to date with the research. Yeah. Like you! <laughs> My gosh! <laughs> <laughs> you a dinosaur, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not a dinosaur, I'm not keeping up to date now. <laughs> <laughs>